Good morning. Today's gospel reading is from Luke 9, 28 to 43. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. And they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sheep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the reading of God's word. We see Jesus going up a hill with three of his friends, uh, Peter, James, and John and is transfigured. And the, the Greek word for this is metamorphos, uh, where we get metamorphosis from. So literally, uh, trans, transfigured into something new, metamorphized into something, something new. However, theologically, there's kind of some other things going on here. And in order to really grasp what Luke and Matthew and Mark are really getting at, with this story of the transfiguration, we have to go back uh, to Moses. And we have to go back to uh, the Israelites wandering, the Hebrew people wandering in the wilderness after being rescued from Egypt and taken out there. And of course, you'll remember uh, uh, Moses went up to the, up the mountain, Mount Sinai, and received the Ten Commandments. And then he came down and they were, everyone was having a big uh, bacchanal and of uh, debauchery and worshiping a calf. Boy, you turn your back for one minute and uh, everything goes to heck in a handbasket. He comes down and in his anger, he throws the tablets to the ground and the Ten Commandments are shattered. I'm sure you remember this from Chuck Heston uh, on TV. Uh, throwing the Ten Commandments to the ground. Well... So they had to go make a new set. <laughs> so in Exodus 34, they go, uh, Moses goes back to get a, a copy <laughs> of the Ten Commandments again. So he has to go back up the mountain and he gets up there and he spends a few days up there, uh, for, 40 days to be specific. And when he comes down, Moses is shining. Because Moses had just spent all this time in the presence of the Shekinah glory of God. Shekinah literally means uh, the, the dwelling place of God. And when you saw the Shekinah glory of God, it, it often appeared as a pillar of fire or a cloud. And in this case, it was the Shekinah glory of God that came upon the mountain when Moses received the Ten Commandments and having been standing in the presence of God and received that and in the presence of that Shekinah glory of God, Moses was also changed. His appearance, his skin glowed. And so when he came down this time with the Ten Commandments intact and his temper uh, a little in check, he came down and Aaron and the other Hebrew people, they were all a little freaked out. They were scared, as a matter of fact. No one wanted to go near him. And finally, he calmed everybody down and brought them near and delivered the tablets. And from then on, Moses put a veil over his face. They didn't, this is what they left out of uh, Chuck Heston's movie is that <laughs> Moses had a veil over his face except when he went up the mountain to talk with God and came back down and would, would deliver the laws of God, would deliver the, the, the words of God to all the people. He removed the veil 
to reveal the Shekinah glory of God that shone in Moses' face. And then he would put this veil back on and wander around with a veil. There's a few, there's a li- some iconography, particularly in the Orthodox tradition, has, has pictures or, or uh, statues of Moses with a veil over his face. And that comes from this, uh, this text. So Jesus goes up the mountain and is, again, a reflection. Jesus himself becomes a reflection of the Shekinah glory of God, the dwelling of God. And so, and so theologically what we're seeing here is Jesus is being revealed in Jesus' true self as a reflection of the glory of God. As we look at Jesus, we see in Christ the reflection of God's glory. Amen? And, and so amazing uh, was that, that the, the Peter, James, and Johns kind of reacted the same way Aaron did. They were a little freaked out, and they bowed down and didn't dare look at Jesus. And when Jesus calmed them down, incidentally, Moses and Elijah were there too. But that's, I won't get into why they're there. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, Peter, James, and John are kind of freaked out. But once, once Jesus tells them to not be afraid and, and be okay, what... Peter wants to do is build two, build three uh, uh, sukkots, build three tents for or, or shrines for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and they just want to stay there and they'll worship uh, these shrines. They'll worship Jesus, Moses, and Elijah in these shrines, and they'll all just stay on the mountain and ex- and just bask in the glow of God's glory. This prompts Jesus to, to stop everything. Moses and Elijah disappear. Jesus is back to the haggard carpenter who's been wandering around Galilee for months and years, uh, covered in dust and soot and all of that. And he says, come on, let's go back down the mountain. We've got to go back down the mountain and uh, do what God has called us to do. And... What Jesus seems to be telling Peter, James, and John is we've got to take this glory that we've experienced up here on this mountain and we've got to take it back down off the mountain and share it with the rest of the world. Fast forward to, um, fast forward to Paul, who also has some reflection on this uh, and has a part to play. Reflecting on Moses and all that took place there. I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 2, beginning in verse 12. So since we have such a hope, we act with great confidence. We aren't like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face so that the Israelites couldn't watch the end of what was fading away. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Lord's Spirit is, there is freedom. All of us looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord as if we were looking in a mirror. We're being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. But Paul is pointing out that this same glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God, that same Shekinah glory of God that went before the Israelites as they wandered in the, in the wilderness, that, that pillar of fire and cloud that led them along the way, that same glory of God that descended upon Mount Sinai and revealed to Moses the Ten Commandments and shone brightly in His face, that same glory of God that, that uh, shone on Jesus in the transfiguration. That same glory of God is being revealed in you and in me as we are filled with the Holy Spirit. That Shekinah glory of God reflects in us. Amen? We shine 
with the glory of God. We shine for all the world to see. And what Paul is trying to get at is let's not veil ourselves away from it the way Moses did, but let our light shine. Let that Shekinah glory shine in us. And we are being what Paul is saying, as we engage in this deep and abiding relationship with God, as we come to know the teachings and the life of Jesus Christ and apply them to ourselves, as we walk, as Paul would say, walk in step with the Holy Spirit, and we receive from that same Holy Spirit the fruits as spelled out in Philippians, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, as we acquire these fruits of that same Spirit, the glory, we are transformed daily, on and on in our lives. More and more, the glory of God shows in us to this hurt and broken world around us. And what is required of us is that effort to stir up that Holy Spirit and to keep that relationship going, to keep that glory glowing within ourselves. One of the things Paul was trying to say about Moses is that one of the things he thought Moses was veiling his face because over time the glory of the Lord faded, dissipated. He's, the glow left. Kind of like those, you know those stars you put on your ceiling? If you don't turn on your light for three days, they, they stop glowing. Those little glow stars. you got to charge them up a little bit. Paul is saying that Moses didn't want people to see that his charge faded over time. As if the, the glory of God was dwindling away from him. And so he had to go back up the mountain and get recharged. And Paul is kind of saying the same thing about about all of us. That as we stir up that Holy Spirit, we have that glow charged up and ready to go. We don't have to veil our face. We can stand before God with unveiled faces. And we can stand before each other with unveiled faces. And the glory of God will shine in us as we stir that up. And we... You know, we stir that up in our prayer life, in our communal worship life, in our, in our uh, engagement with the Word, and in our own faithful experiences of grace and mercy at the hand of a loving God. As we seek out the teachings of Jesus and we try to apply them to ourselves, not just for our own good, not just to try and get to heaven, but in the hopes of the kingdom of God here on earth, Right now. Amen? Amen. That's where we see the glory of God shine. As we throw our efforts into this idea that Jesus lived for, died for, rose again for. That the kingdom of God is at hand. And it shines. You. Me. More importantly, in us as we are faithful and attentive and in step with God's Holy Spirit, as we let our glory shine. Don't let let anyone ever tell you that God is not seen in you. We are, like Jesus, a reflection of God's glory. Unveil it for all to see. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you so much for this, this story of Jesus revealing himself to three of his disciples. And as we have heard this story in the gospel, revealing himself to us for who Jesus really is, a reflection of the glory of God. And God, may we also, in our daily lives, in the way we live, in the way we engage with you, in the way we stir up your Holy Spirit within us, may we also, in our lives, be a constant reflection of the glory of God in us. 
so that all the world may see, and all the world be transformed, transfigured, become more a reflection of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.